Here we have a simplified schematic of an analog PID controller designed around operational amplifiers. Note that compensation components needed to make this circuit work in the real world are not shown. In this case, it will be used to control the position of a geared DC motor. This is the process variable Y and it is measured using a potentiometer as seen on the right. The motor and potentiometer comprise the plant or process to be controlled. The set point W is also determined by a potentiometer. The differential amplifier on the left subtracts the actual position from the set point and outputs the error signal E, providing feedback to the controller. This error is then amplified, integrated and differentiated, resulting in the P, I and D signals that are added together resulting in the control signal U. By modifying resistor values, the gain of each term may be adjusted for the desired result. Due to the nature of the circuit use, the PID terms are inverted once and then again when they are added together. As the control signal lacks the power needed to drive a motor, it goes through a high current amplifier, which in turn drives the motor. For a practical application, driving the motor with PWM instead of a variable voltage would reduce power consumption and heat dissipation. This is the physical implementation of the PID controller on a breadboard. Set point and position potentiometers are connected on the top left, and on the top right the high current drive transistors are located. The differential amplifier, integrator, differentiator, and others shown before are built using op-amps. Note the three trimmers that allow for the proportional, integral, and derivative gains to be adjusted. This is the plant, a geared motor whose output shaft is coupled to a potentiometer with some clear tubing all fixed to a wooden block with zip ties. An additional zip tie is added to the potentiometer shaft so its position is clearly visible. Here we can see the controller and the motor potentiometer assembly. Set point and output are being monitored by the oscilloscope. Everything is powered by three power supplies, one for the op-amps plus and minus 15 volts and another two for the motors plus and minus 12 volts. It is best for them to be separate so that they don't interfere with each other. Currently, only the proportional term is connected and its gain is set to a low value. As the set point in yellow is modified, it can be seen both on the assembly and on the scope that the output in blue follows it. Due to the low proportional gain, there is a significant stationary error. As the control signal is proportional to the error, once the error reaches a certain value, the control signal is not enough to overcome the static friction of the motor, and thus it never reaches the set point. If we increase the proportional gain in order to minimize the error, it results in a dampened or sustained oscillation around the set point, which is not desirable. Adding the derivative term allows for higher proportional gain while stopping oscillation. The derivative action depends on how fast the error is changing and slows down the response when it is changing too rapidly. Therefore, it reduces overshoot and when adjusted correctly, it prevents oscillation. It can be seen that now the output follows the set point closely and it does so quickly and without overshoot. Effects of the integral term may be observed with low proportional gain, where the stationary error is significant. As time goes by, the integral of the error keeps increasing until the control signal overcomes the static friction of the motor, and it changes position. It can be seen that the integral action allows for ideally zero stationary error. 